welcome back to our YouTube channel. I am your librarian, Mrs. Johnson. This week we're going to learn about a book award that is extra special to me. It's called the Caldecott Medal. And this award is one of the oldest book awards for children's books and it's given to the illustrator. Not the author, but the illustrator. The Caldecott Medal is all about the pictures in the books. So it's extra specially special to me because some of you might know this already, maybe some of you don't. During the daytime, I'm a librarian. And in the evenings when I come home, I'm an artist. So I really love making art. I really love looking at art. And I really love sharing art. So today I'm going to read you a Caldecott Medal book that won last year. It's called Hello Lighthouse. So before we talk about the book, let's look at the award. This is the Caldecott Medal. You can see the words on it. And it has a picture of a person riding a horse and some other characters on it. When a book gets first place for their pictures, it gets a gold Caldecott Medal. And there are also silver Caldecott Medals that are given to the runners up that are called honor books. Well, this is very worthy of winning the Caldecott Medal, in my opinion. Hello Lighthouse is written and illustrated by the same person, Sophie Blackall. So when I read this, make sure that you are paying extra special attention to the pictures because the Caldecott Medal is all about the illustrations. Here we go. On the highest rock of a tiny island, at the edge of the world, stands a lighthouse. It is built to last forever, sending its light out to sea, guiding the ships on their way. From dusk to dawn, the lighthouse beams. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Lighthouse. The new keeper arrives to replace the old, to carry on tending the light. He polishes the lens and refills the oil and trims the burned end of the wick. Throughout the night, he winds the clockwork that keeps the lamp in motion. During the day, he gives the round rooms a fresh coat of sea green paint. He writes in the log book and threads his needle and listens to the gathering wind. The wind takes a deep breath and blows and blows. Hello, hello. Hello. The keeper boils water and drinks his tea. As he fishes for cod from the window, he sets the table and hums a tune and wishes for someone to talk to. Every few days he writes her a letter and throws it into the waves. He tends the light and writes in the log book, and he waits for her reply. Wow, look at that picture. Pretty cool, huh? The sky grows dark, and the waves rise and crash. Hello, hello, hello. The keeper looks through his telescope. The tender arrives, bringing oil and flour and pork and beans and his wife. He shows her around the round rooms of their house. He tends the light and writes in the log book and sets the table for two. Ooh. The fog makes everything disappear. A bell must be rung to warn the ships. 
clang, clang, clang. One thick night, disaster strikes. A boat is wrecked on the rocks. Not a moment to lose, the keeper rows out. He pulls three sailors from the deep black sea. He tends the light and writes in the log book and wraps the sailors in blankets. The sea turns into a carpet of ice. Hello, hello, hello. Might be hard to see, but those are little seals resting on the ice. One dawn, the keeper begins to sneeze, and by dusk, he is terribly ill. His wife is everywhere all at once, running up and down the spiral stairs. She tends the light and feeds him broth and chips ice off of the lantern room windows. She sits by his side and writes in the log book the minute his fever breaks. The icebergs pass by on their journey south. The whales pass by on their journey north. Hello, hello, hello. Inside the lighthouse, the woman walks around and around the room. Her husband boils water and helps her breathe in and out. He tends the light and writes in the log book and notes the birth of their child. Born in a lighthouse? Cool. The sky erupts in swirls of green. Hello, hello, hello. Do you know what those green lights in the sky are called? The northern lights or aurora borealis. Have you ever gotten to see them? They're pretty cool. I got to see them once in Minnesota. The tender arrives again, bringing oil and flour and pork and beans and the mail. Along with fresh books and news from the land, there's an unexpected letter with the Coast Guard seal. The keeper winds the clockwork and polishes the lens just as he's always done. He tends the light and writes in the log book but knows that it's not for long. Together, they watch the horizon. Can you see them up there using a telescope? I think that's called a telescope. <laughs> the Coast Guard arrives with a brand new light and installs the machine to run it. No lamp to fill, no wick to trim. The keeper's work is done. He climbs to the top of the spiral stairs and closes the log book for good. They pack their belongings into the boat and wave farewell to the gulls. Beyond the breakers, they all look up. Goodbye, lighthouse. Goodbye. 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 On the highest rock of a tiny island, at the edge of the world stands a lighthouse. It is built to last forever, sending its light out to sea. The fog rolls in and the fog rolls out. The waves rise and crash. The wind blows and blows. Hello, 
Hello? 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 Might be hard to see. <gasps> There's another light talking back to that lighthouse. You want to know who it is? It's the family. There's a little child all grown up. So they moved out of the lighthouse, but they still have a beautiful view of it. And that's the end. The end of Hello Lighthouse. Ugh! I forgot how much I love this book. I've heard it many, many times and it is so good. Let's talk about this story for a second. Did you know that lighthouses are a very important thing still today? Lighthouses shine close to rocky shores and cliffs. They let ships know, big boats know, that there is something that they should stay away from, that there's land or rocks or dark things in the water that they might not be able to see. And a long time ago, someone really had to live in a lighthouse to make sure that that light was always shining. It could never go out. So the person who lives in a lighthouse is called a lighthouse keeper. I for one think that would be a pretty cool job, right? Taking care of a light, making sure that the oil that fuels the light is always full, making sure that the windows are clean and not fogged up so the light can shine through brightly. But one day, technology came along and there was no need for an actual person to live in a lighthouse anymore. A technology could just keep the light going, right? Electricity. So that makes me kind of sad. But what a cool story, living in a lighthouse. Wow. So remember, the reason I read you this book today is because it won the Caldecott Medal. What did you think of the pictures? Pretty cool, huh? I love the colors that Sophie Blackall used. And she used really interesting perspective. Like this perspective is when you look at things in a different way maybe from up above or from all around. Really, really cool. <gasps> One more awesome thing to share about this book is that I actually got to meet Sophie Blackall last year. She came to the Bozeman Community Library for a special event that they have every year. And I heard her talk about this book and some of the others that she made. Really cool. And this is one of our Hetqua Library books. She was so kind to autograph it. So down here, she signed her name. She drew a little whale by the boat. And then up here it says, hello to the Hetqua Cool Cubs. So hello, Hetqua Cool Cubs. Hello from Sophie Blackall, Caldecott Medal winner. And hello from your librarian. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.